There is a line in Leonard Bernstein, to achieve great things, two things are needed, a plan and not quite enough time. The first ballade is impossible. So it, it was a sort of ridiculous thing to try, and as you, as you suggest, I didn't have enough time. But that was, almost, that was almost the point of the book, because there are so many people who used, used to play the piano, or used to do this or this, and, and, and usually it's the biggest regret of their life, or one of the biggest regrets of their life, that they stopped. Uh, and usually their excuse for not starting again is they didn't have time. So the book is, is partly about having a, a fairly crazy life, editing a newspaper during a particularly crazy period, and yet finding time to tackle this impossible piece of music. I've always thought, there are all these things I'm going to do when I retire. You know, there's all these Dickens novels I haven't yet read. Um, Middlemarch, I've never read Middlemarch. Um, uh, and I was going to learn, relearn to play the piano. And then you realize, you know, you're 56. It's, why wait till you're 65 to do to It do won't these get things? better. It's not going to get any better. And that comes to the question of how do you find the time? And, and you know, my answer was just to get up half an hour earlier in the morning. Um, but I, I made it almost religious that I would find the time. And in moments of great stress, I find it helped. You speak in the book of all these pianists you went to speak to, Marie Pariah, Alfred Brendel, Daniel Barenboim, Emmanuel Axe, Condoleezza Rice, you went to speak to also. <coughs> she can play it. Mm -hmm. I was interested in someone else who I, I Has had Has a busy read. life. I had quite a busy life. She was, she was involved in a lot of wars. Um, <laughs> um, um, uh, but at the same time as being involved in a lot of wars, she would find time to play chamber music once a month. Just before coming downstairs here, I took you to the special collections, and one of our fine curators, Bill Stingone, showed you some impressive papers, uh, the Pentagon Papers. Uh, the, the, there was a, a, a a series of, of, of correspondence around the publication of the Pentagon Papers. Uh, and it was just remarkable reading the correspondence uh, around the very, very brave stance that New York Times took in 1972 over the publication of the Pentagon Papers, uh, because it, it mirrors so much the, the, the internal discussions uh, and the challenges that we have had over the, the Snowden material. That, that was done in the face of, uh, you know, real government menace uh, and, and criminal menace. Since 1972, and that's why that court case was so important, uh, I, think it, I think it is inconceivable that uh, a, a government would try to use prior restraint against a news organization. That, that is, to stop something from coming out. You said to Bill Keller, the then editor of the New York Times, we've got the flash drive, you've got the First Amendment. Yeah. In, in Britain, what happened was that the, the, the government came to see me to say, that's enough. Uh, and we had this, you know, the most bizarre event in my journalistic life when uh, we were in the basement of The Guardian uh, with power drills um, at attacking the... This is, this is the hard drive of a, of a, uh, of a MacBook Pro once, once it's been destroyed to British government standards. Um, uh, and do you carry that around with you? I do. Well, it's a kind of reminder. In fact, I've, I've got boxes of them I've offered to... Uh, I was going to give one to the New York Public Library. I hope to, you to, do. To, to <laughs> I think it's a sort of artifact. It, yeah. it is, it's, it's about, that's a sort of symbol of, of the role of the state versus the role of the journalist. One, obviously, for understandable reasons, wants to close down debate, although it says it doesn't. Um, uh, and I think the role of the journalist is to responsibly open up the debate. Um, and, and that's what happened in Britain, um, and I don't think that's what would happen in America, so I carried around with me.